So welcome. Welcome to the Drupal console session. Welcome to DrupalCon. And we're happy you are here. Thank you for coming to this session. Mm -hmm. So about us, so let me introduce Jesus Manuel Olivas. Uh, Jesus is from Mexico, Mexicali. And he works as, as everything <laughs> in We Know, which is our new adventures dedicated to uh, trainings in Symphony, Drupal 8, and we have another some products in, in, in mind in the future. So if you are interested in consulting about Symphony, Drupal 8, you can call us. Now let me introduce Eduardo Enzo. He's a Colombian living in Costa Rica. You can, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> yeah, again, it's another co container of the project, and well, you can find in and solutions, and if you are going to Australia, Drupal South, it's going to be there. So first thing, first, I mean, you hear Drupal console, and you may say, what? Another CLI? This might be a question. Another question is, is a f real full CLI? It's not only a generator. And we will touch those topics in, during this session. And let's, let's keep moving. What is? OK, so many of you maybe are, are, you know Drupal console as a tool to generate. But actually, uh, Drupal console, the generation part is only one tier of the solution. The other tier is interaction with the, uh, your Drupal system. And the other thing is try to debug information. Uh, and if you are more interested about this subject, tomorrow we will have a session about how you can use the debugging commands we have inside Drupal console to try to learn Drupal 8 from there. And well, what's I know that's more, more information about it. It's, it's Drupal console, just take advantage of Symfony and other third-party components, as you know, as you can figure out. Symfony console, Twig, you know, dependency injection. A lot of the same components you will find out in D8. You can also find it here. And same thing for object-oriented practices and modern development. I mean, practices, same approach that you see in D8, you will see in, in, in Drupal console. And let's talk about who maintained this project. Well, it's David Flores, unfortunately, is not here, but it's Ricardo is in representation. Representing, representing him, and myself, Jesus Manuel Olivas, Enzo, right here, and Omar Aguirre as well. Yeah. As you can see, everybody looks Mexican, right? It's, it's not a problem, it's not a racist, so they, <laughs> they, are, they are Mexican, and I am almost but Mexican. You? <laughs> yeah, you are almost. <laughs> So this, the current supporting organizations for this product, that means companies that invest office time, I mean paid hours for create Drupal console are our company, we know. I have a, another uh, Drupal workshop in Costa, in Costa Rica named Annexus. So we, uh, Drupal console for us is like a, the commodine project. When someone is free, they need to invest his free time in Drupal console during office hours. And in Daba, who is Ricardo company with uh, David uh, from Mexico, they, they provide, again, the hours to this. So this is what showed this. is like a, when you want to start a project, first, you don't need to live in USA or San Francisco or something like that, right? Second, uh, you don't need to be a big company. So it's, 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 it's all about the, your passion about your idea. So uh, we started that from Mexico. I live in Costa Rica, a teeny tiny country that 80% of people doesn't know where it is located. <laughs> uh, but you can do that if, if you are here in England, in, in Tasmania, whatever. It's just about the passion you have uh, in the idea. Well, let's talk about the why, right? So we tell you Drupal Console is CL, full CLI. Again, it's not only a boilerplate code generator. Why just build it? And same thing, you know, we build it because we want to follow the same approach as D8, you know, object-oriented, you know, all these new, nice, really nice new things, these modern, I mean, practices. And we all know D8 is more technically advanced, you know, creating a controller or a plugin involves a lot, a lot of boilerplate code nowadays. So it's, this tool can help you, yes, to generate that code, but it also can help you do several things, like, you know, debugging the system. There's a lot of new subsystems in Drupal now, like, 
plugins, events, you know, services on the service container, the routes and the routing system, all those different subsystems, you can take, you can use Drupal console to debug those and have create, I mean, enlist what's registering in the system. So, so the problem with all those new tools is they are amazing, but the problem is as a company or as a developer, you need to invest a huge amount of hours to try to handle all of them. So looking as a business perspective, vision is like a, that's mean you need to invent months in a, in a developer to become from zero to a proficient developer so the idea is and the problem is in the process is three four five or six months doing that that's mean that resource they are not producing money for the company the idea is what we do and we believe at least is like a from the day one this person even if he's a junior he could be a little productive and the output he generated with the Drupal console could be a self-training process and also will be save money and will be productive for the company. Uh, from day one? From day one. Right. Okay, L let me talk uh, about a little statistics of the project. So right now we have uh, more than a quarter million downloads from we started this project. And this is counting based in packages, numbers, and GitHub. Downloads, yeah. We have more than 200 contributors around the world. So at the beginning, we start only in Latin America, but now we have contributors in all continents, and we have 90 releases uh, so far. We have been doing this for almost three years. Almost three years, yeah. Mm -hmm. And guess. Okay, uh, uh, as I asked before, so right now we are supported by 19 languages because as a Spanish speakers, we understand uh, sometimes even if you are available to speak English, or maybe you do not speak English at all, sometimes it's better when someone explains you in your mother tongue. So it's more clear and get it here, not here, right? So we, we embrace this in this project and we support native language. So the curious thing is like, uh, maybe you think because we are a Spanish speaker, Spanish is the more popular translated in the console. Naturally, it's Hindi and Chinese uh, simplified. Spanish is like a ranking in the sixth language. But we have languages like a Hungarian, Romanian, Vietnamese. Uh, Vietnamese, Russian, Hindi, and an another two languages from India, Mogarati, I, for sure I do, doesn't pronounce properly, and another one. So it's, it's very located, and we are uh, looking for people who want to do this, because this is important, as I say, it's a, a tool you can use for, for training, so imagine like uh, you could hire a junior and maybe he doesn't speak English because he lives in Indonesia. He only speaks Bahasa. But if you could provide the tool that generates his content in Bahasa, he could, and you say, read this documentation, learn how the commands um, are used in Bahasa. In the, in the day one, even if he's a junior with some PHP knowledge, he could be a start to doing some Drupal -like projects. And this is a win-win to win relation because when, when people hire an internship guy or something, the problem is you need to mentor this, but mentor this guy, that means you need to put the most expensive resource to train up a, a resource that doesn't produce money for the company. So it's a, it's a deadlock, right? And then you, if you just say, do your best, and obviously do your best is after three months, <laughs> he don't produce in, nothing effective for the company. But if you, if you provide something uh, in the language and provide some self-training or, uh, or, or re reduce the amount of hours the senior developer who need to supervise this will be good for, for both. Now the interesting guy, he will feel he will be productive for the company. I am producing something really valuable for the company. For this reason, we encourage, uh, if you want to translate the Drupal console to Ukrainian or any other language to do, yeah, uh, please do. And it's actually really easy. Yeah, it's, it's just text files, JAML files, you can open, you don't need an IDE to do that. And uh, just as a side note, we decided to use the, the translator component of Symfony just in order to decouple the, all of the messages from the code because none of us was like an English speaker, so we decided to extract that. And, that's, and then we figured out, once we're already using this, why don't we just make this product, I mean, the project translatable? And by default, the Symfony console component does not support that, so we end up adding like more features to the component. We're still keeping in, in in a separate project, we haven't, but yeah, it's like, we end up like adding more features, so you will find out if you already use the Symfony, I mean, Symfony components that we are currently using, you might be find out a few things that are not there and we are extending, sending it from that. Okay, 
if you want to take a look about how it looks the Drupal console in the language, uh, this is Hindi, as you can see, right? And I will say as you can read. But <laughs> no, you can read for sure. It's it's really difficult. And I really love these kind of images. I, I obviously I don't understand what they say, but I could see in their eyes when I was in India and I showed them this. They they feel this like oh this is something for me. This is something for real. Even that Eng almost IT guys in technology in India that speak Spanish. This is something that is really uh, useful for that. So in here you can do something in Irish if you want, right? It, it's, it, and also this is separate idea, but this is uh, possible to try to sustain how a, a language could, is spoken only for few people maintain a life. Like we have a translation for Catalan. And he said this is a way that we could uh, try to preserve our language living, right? To introduce in language. So it's not like a, not because I speak English, I need to refuse my, my own language. We, I need to, to try to help to be continue using, okay? But this is ph philosophical stuff, right? So in number right now, we have 152 commands and counting. Uh, recent two months, we uh, slowed down because we we did uh, we did a, a refactor in the whole console, but the, uh, starting today we expand we sp we expect to have more new commands uh, for this. So how we divided that? You say is generator is only forty two, but obviously generator are, are so flexible that can, in one command could produce depending the output many different solutions, and we have eighty commands related with side integration. And, and 30 for the book. In this part, um, I always think in this way, the, the UI for Drupal 8 is only uh, one story, one point of view, the point of view of the web publisher, right? But that doesn't mean there is no another stories. Like a, there are a lot of information in Drupal 8 that is not possible to be accessible. One of them, right now, dependency injection is a big deal in Drupal 8. But now there is no way as us for as a developer to recognize or get a list a list for all the containers. And if, you, if we have a command for that, and there are all, all 522 services available in in in, in Drupal 8, so, and you need this information. Uh, for this reason, we create all these commands to try to inspect this data and expose to the developer. Because other ways you get lost to say. How many rollers we have registered? How many containers? How many? So it's, it's too difficult. So just, just adding this in the way we am. One another reason we add those commands. We start the project again as a scaffolding tool. We all know that. Uh -huh. And uh, we were generating controllers, right? So controllers affects the routing system, creates a new route. We we start adding generators for for services. So it registers a new service on the service container. And at some point, we find out. We didn't have any way for for um, for discover all those all those subsystems, so we end up adding all this this debugging I mean feature on on the on the project. If you want to know more about debugging, um, there's there's a session tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh -huh. no, let, let's talk about it will. This. Let's see. You know. And uh, finally, the RC one is here, and as you can see, it released today, like probably like 15 minutes before the <laughs> session. Yeah, we would like to you would like to live in danger. And it's, uh, there's a lot of changes coming, and when I say a lot, it's a lot. Uh, we break the project, so I'm, long story short, we break the project into separated, in separate um, repos. So we have something called Drupal Console Core, who contains like the main core nucleus of the project. Then we have a, something we call la the launcher, which is basically a way for keep having the executable, the global executable. So this will help you to find Drupal, if it's Drupal is installed in a, in a specific site. But probably the biggest, biggest change is now it requires to install Drupal console per site basis. So it means if you have a site, then you need to run a command for doing that. And I will show you in a few which command is this. So again, starting today, if you get the latest version, if you run the you know, curl installer or the self-update command, you will get RC1. And e, you maybe find out, you know, oh, something is broken or it's telling me Drupal console is not installed on my site. This is, this is because that's the new way of doing things. And main reason for doing this is to avoid dependency conflicts. It's, um, let's, we will let Composer manage their dependencies and, you know, because that's what Composer task is supposed to do. 
and describe. Yeah, well, if, if you're interested in details about how the Drupal console works, so we have the Drupal console website, you, you could find the statistics and how installed. We have documentation in Drupal console. I say we have 19 languages support, but for 10 of them, the documentation is in, in languages. It's, like a, it's in Japanese, Hindi, um, Russian, and other languages. So you could you could read that, and we have an also a, a, a channel in Gitter. If you want to get some level of support or ideas or something, you could come in and talk with us. So if you have if you already use Gitter before, this is a tool similar to Slack, but with integrated with uh, GitHub. Uh, so this is a modern way to to do it because we don't like IRC. And w well, when I say we, I say it's me. <laughs> it's not that it's not that I don't like it's it looks kinda old. Okay. So getting back to what the again, how to install Drupal console, remember? Before it was something like, you know, it's getting the executable and then the executable contain used to contain all of all of the commands, but now it's not. The instructions are the same. So it's a running a curl command, calling a you a route or URL and in this gets gets you that Drupal.far file. It's a far file is just Something is PHP archive. It's just a whole application. It's packaged into one file, and this file is marked as executable. And then, second step that you need to do is move your file. So, something like move Drupal.far to in a place that is globally accessible. In this case, user local bin, right? So, this means after doing this, I will be able to type Drupal from anywhere in my system, and Drupal console will be executed. And, well, some, in some systems, you need to do something like this, just adding, just changing the mode of your file and make, marking your file as executable. And uh, we highly recommend you to run the init command. This will allow you to copy configuration files to your system and modifying those files or updating those files is also is the way you can use for I mean, changing the behavior of the, of the project. Language, yeah, languages, for instance, you can set a different language just, just by, by modifying this file. And again, it starting today, Drupal console must be installed per site. So if you run Drupal in a site that you just get, let's say you get the tar from Drupal.org or you just create you something like git clone Drupal repo and you try to run Drupal console, it will tell you that it's not installed. But I mean, it also, the same message, it tells you, you know, that you, this is the command you need to require. Something like Drupal, requ I mean, uh, sorry, composer require, Drupal console, blah, blah, blah. So after running this command, Composer will take care of downloading Drupal console and the proper dependencies and try and he will do his best for fixing any conflicts between the libraries or the dependencies of Drupal console and Drupal. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember probably back in like six months, a year ago, we have an issue that just break the whole thing, you know, it's like, you know, there's Drupal release and everything was broken. And that's the point when we start thinking about doing this, and it took us like a long time because that's how it was a big refactor. But it, it was a, a change version on a, on a Gossel component of Drupal, of Drupal. So Drupal was using a specific version, and that version has a bug or something. And it was loading a file, and then we were loading another file, different version of the same file. So everything was like broken, and you totally like, I mean, error, just terrible error messages, right? And doing something like this, like separating the project, and requiring Drupal console to be installed per site, it will fix all those issues for you. For you. An another, benefit <clears throat> another benefit of this refactor is like a, a, in the previous version, if you want to use the latest command of the Drupal console, then you need to, you, you are forced to use the latest Drupal because that, that version has the latest commands. So it, uh, as, a, as a company or as a developer, usually you are in two or more sites at the same moment. So you could maintain different versions and, and work independently. Uh, and this is w how we live. Uh, maybe this is weird in a way within Drupal console is an application, and it is. But remember, it's a, a Drupal console is an extension of Symfony console. So it's the same, it's the same way when we use kernel, kernel for Symfony. This is, is the same. And just, just, getting back to the same just getting back to the same story. This will sound like fun, but when we started the project, we used to do it like that. You know, Composer required Drupal console, and everyone within the community was complaining about we were hacking core. And back in that day, Composer was not like well known in the Drupal community. And I remember, I mean, well, 
long story short, I was doing Drupal, then moved to Symphony, then when I back to Symphony to working on this project, I was like, no, this is the way that should happen. Use Composer Require and let Composer you know, handle and manage dependencies. And people were like complaining and no, this is, shouldn't be happening. So we decided to go all around, you know, just packaging in a separate project, deploying as a far, you know, getting your to download. But then that give you, I mean, bring us another problem, but between probably two years of that, the Drupal community, you know, really embraced Composer, and now this is a good practice. So we are basically we are at the same point when we start. But it's it's good. I mean, we learn a lot. We end up discard. I mean, discarding a lot of code on this new version because I mean we have to do a lot of like magics. It's no longer required, so it's great for us. And again, if you want to get, you can just running a Composer require. But if you want to avoid running this. We highly recommend you using the Drupal Composer project. You can run something like Composer, Create Project, and then Drupal Composer. This Composer template, it contains Drupal, Drupal Console, and all of the packages you need to manage your site. So instead of getting Drupal from um, DO and then adding Drupal, I mean Drupal Console, you can just run this command, and this will get Drupal and Drupal Console for you. Yeah, and actually, this will be the new way. I mean, uh, because this is an independent project named Drupal Composer, but starting in January 2017, uh, we will have an official repository from packages.drupal.org. Um, so all the uh, this will be our best friend <laughs> in Drupal, and officially will be in January 2017. So now, now it's a good time to start to playing with this kind of tools. Yeah, and if you want to know more about Composer and the workflow and Composer workflow, we have a buff tomorrow, so make sure you take a look at it, the schedule. And, well, another thing you will might notice using the latest version is probably complaints about the configuration file. Or if you run it first time, it would, now it tells you, you know, there's a missing configuration file. And if you run this within a site, it will tell you the possible options for it. You know, it's telling you this configuration could be either on the site or on the home directory, this is another change happening on RC1, you can keep configurations per site basis. It means you can commit that configuration in your, rep in your repo and share across your whole theme. It means you can set a specific configuration for running Drupal console, like disable specific commands or forcing some arguments or options in a specific commands. And you can do that at the repo level and everyone within your team can share the same configuration. When you run Drupal init command, something like this happened. You know, this is like really shiny, nice thing. It's like, you know, if you use um, Symfony console component, you, will, you, you know you can ask questions. This is like, this is great because I mean, interaction is great for user. And it starts asking you a few questions. First, like, you want to, I mean, copy the init file in the current directory. It means you are in a Drupal site. And then ask you, it, what will be your web directory? Because if you are using, Drupal Composer, the web public directory is not the root of your project, it's within this web directory. If you're using lining distribution, same thing, now it's called doc root, doc root instead of the root of the project. So in it command, I'm mean, gonna ask you, what, what do you want to set as your public web directory? And ask you some other questions, like what the language you want to use, what is temporary, but a few questions that you know we, you might be want to set and finally, it will show you a message like this. You know, all these fi file files will copy it in your system. And s some other messages, like, I mean, will show you like how it will tell you, it will show you instruction for enabling autocomplete. So when you start typing something like Drupal and then generate something, you will see the autocompletion on the CLI. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so as I say, the idea in Drupal console is could be. Uh, work in autopilot, so you don't need to have previous experience with Drupal Console or Drupal 8 to start to use. So in all our commands, we have an interactive mode. So as soon as you, you start the execution, if you don't know the parameters, we have offer, based in the configuration language, the question about what is required to execute this command. And in sometimes the questions provide the options. It's like a, if you are generating a controller and you want to in, in, inject a service as a de, uh, using dependency injection, you will have a list and just using the arrow of your keyword, you, you could navigate or search by the criteria or test to find the services you want to execute. And when you don't want, you hit enter and as a result, you will get everything, everything like that. So it's not like a, you need to know 
around the whole system. Because again, the idea is you don't need to know everything. You need to know a specific what you want. And the output we generate is, is, is obviously all the decorations and the developers, they need to concentrate only in the business logic, which is the part of the client they want to pay. You, if you say, I spent six hours understanding PSR4 to, in, to be able to include the NN spaces, the client will say, huh, now what? I don't want to pay for that, right? This is the objective. This is why you need to use the Drupal console. And again, the junior, need, need, it's not necessary to be prepared for that. But if you are an experienced user, you always, you could put the parameters in line and then you will get the results. And even better, we have a, a global par, a auction. This is dash dash generate dash in line. So you execute the command using interactive mode and at the end, they will produce an output like that. So you just need to copy, share it with your friend in Slack and then uh, he will get the same result as you. In this way, we will, uh, avoid any miscommunication, like a, when you say by phone or something, click here, click here, click here, no. You execute by yourself in interactive mode, copy and paste, and he will say, uh, he will get the same result as you. And let me, let me tell you how, how this happens, yeah? You know, you see all these really, really nice questions, the auto completion thing, and all this like, you know, confirmation, yes, no. So we are using something called Drupal, I mean, Symphony style, well, Drupal style, it's a class that we are extending for from Symphony. Symphony used, used to call Symphony style. It, they say it's a way for, it's a, they decide to do some standard way of outputting information on the CLI. And we are extending this, adding a little more features, but basically working with this is as easy as, you know, importing the class, creating a new instance of this, you know, and passing a few arguments. And then, you know, in order to output, like, common text like title or section info or even a table, you use the methods within the IO object. You can, you can easily, I mean, output error or warning messages or success messages in a really bare most mode. And as you can, and you can also ask for, when you're asking for a question, you can say, I want to ask and show a list. So user can use errors as and was, so was mentioning or start typing and then filtering the result. Uh, using ch like choice for that or confirmation if you want to ask for yes no uh, if you you can even use this as this as hiding you know for as if you don't want to show the, the value like you ask asking for a password for connecting to your database or something there's a lot of a lot of more I mean features that you can just you see and what we just end up adding a few things or extending this is for adding a um, comment block which is basically a different color of a comment we want to we didn't want to use like this Green, I mean red because I mean we use red for errors and warnings. We do want another color like less like you know heavy for your eyes. We have choice no list because the default component show you the whole list of, of uh, options. Let's say you have a list of like five to ten options and you want to select it's totally fine. But how about when you have let's say uh, selecting a service from the container and we have like a mongoose number of it. So we add this choice no list. I mean I, I know that name is totally like weird, but I mean. That's what we came at. Yeah. And, and, and this is something when we have time, we will try to split out in a separate library to try to be able to use even in a Symfony console project. So you just import the library and create your Symfony console for something, commands, and using our style. Yeah, that one is the, that's one of the goal of us for start breaking the project and separating like, like projects instead of you having like monolithic things or, or ideas start contributing back to all those projects. And so you can take advantage of those in other parts and in other, I mean, applications. And again, I was mentioning, you know, the really reverse mode, this, the verbose mode. So this is how it looks like. You know, you have, we have this red for errors or warnings, big green thing for success. And guess what? We just take advantage of the symphony style, I mean, I mean class, and we just basically showing you something like this. So that's one of the reasons we decide to build the project on top of other libraries, right? Because we don't want to, we just want to take advantage of what's already there. Want to talk about code generation? Yeah. So this is the big one, right? That everybody came for generator and I stay for the other commands. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is we provide generator for the almost basic, no, no much more than basic needs you have a programmer. So we have generator for models, controllers, forms, blocks, entity contents, plugins, CK editor plugins, and the REST API. So 
if you find something that you can need to do in a Drupal 8 project that we don't have a generator, well, this is a challenge for us, but at least I think you must be a senior developer to, or not senior developer, maybe your requirement is very, very specific, but we handle almost everything. I don't want to sound pretension, but what I mean is if you, if you, if you face something that we don't have, please um, start an issue and we will try to accomplish. Or why don't better send a pull request? Uh, Exactly, but again, so you you can basically you could generate almost what a developer need is a controller, a routing, a form, a block, a plugin for views. Uh, this is a uh, how many of you use BHP, P, views PHP in Drupal six or seven? Bad guys, <laughs> because this is a security issue for that. Ah, ah. <laughs> ah yeah, I use I use the far so. Uh, uh, the problem is uh, we have a generator to avoid to do that and use properly, but we always do that because create a handler for views in Drupal 6 and 7, seven was hell complicated, right? But now it's easy with the generator. So please uh, try, test, and broke, and report the issues. Okay. Okay, that's fine. And we just, I mean, just kind of showing you some commands for talking about System interaction, we have, you know, side status is pretty much basically the status report you can see from the UI, but you don't have to, like, type your password, click, click, like, four times and see the results, so you can do it, get it from the CLI. Use the login URL or old friend, you know, I want to get the URL for logging into the site as a user, then you get it here. Module install as well as themes, you know, same for download. And we are taking advantage of core feature for generating, like, dummy data. So we have create nodes, create term, and create user commands, so you can populate your site or seed your site with, with you know, fake data on your build process. We have, I mean, talking about debugging, we have, you know, as we, we keep mentioning, Drupal console give you the chance to discover all of the new subsystems in Drupal, like container, like services and service container, routes on the routing system, you know, plugins definition in, in event definition. It also allows you to, like, listing any configuration and state. But if you want to know, again, more about the uh, debugging feature of Drupal Console, make sure you attend our session tomorrow, 5, 5 p.m. And you want to talk about this? Yeah, this, uh, a lot of people ask, what about to execute all commands in, in, remote, uh, in remote mode? Uh, some people think, because oh, it's a generator tool, so we only need to use local. But actually, the idea is you can expect all your remote site to do that. For that, we have some commands, and uh, you just need, need to define what is the, obviously, the credentials and remote, the SSH and everything, and then you could say, I want to rent, uh, because maybe you developed something, you push in the server, and the routing is not working. So you need, to, you need to review if the routing was properly registered, but there is no way to do. Uh, but if you install a Drupal console in your remote server and enable the credentials from your machine, you can get a list of all valid routers in your in your dev services to do that. So what you need to do that, you need to call, to install the Drupal console in the remote server. You need to have a user, obviously, with remote execution shell, and that's it. Uh, until now, only two hosting providers allow that. One in German, and another I don't remember. So chain on me. Uh, but we requested to the big ones to try to include, but it's obviously out of or power, right? Yeah, I mean, if you have a VPS, you can obviously have it uh, and run it, but if you are using any other provider, you can ask them to this, you know, I want to, I, would be great to have in Drupal console in your platform, yeah? Maybe. Probably, and, and maybe you're guessing, could I write a command for this? I mean, there is a way I can write, write a command. Sure, there is. And actually, we have a command for generate commands. Let's say you might be have a module, have an idea of a command, but you know that command is only for your needs. It's not something that could be, probably doesn't fit too well on Drupal console core, so you want to add in your project. So you create a, you, Drupal generate module first, right? You generate the module, and then we have this Drupal generate command. So in this case, we are using the inline mode, so I'm passing all of the options, and this is what it will happen. A new class will be created, and this is what it happens in, in every single generator, it creates a class in the proper directory, right, like this. 
and with the proper name because you know when you have an object in a class and use this typo between the object name and the file name didn't load it because of the P how PSR4 works and it also takes care of adding the namespace right it creates the file in the proper directory register uh, with the proper namespace it also add the proper you know importing the classes that you require in this case it's a command but if you are generating a plugin or a controller or something it it has it imports the required core classes that you need and then we are using annotations in order to set the um, if this command belongs to another extension. In this case, we call extension because extension could be anything like a module, theme, or profile. So you just give it a single name instead of having you know team or different like values. So we call extension. So you need to do something like this. Well, you don't have to because the generator will do it for you. But if you want to create manually, and set which is the extension your command belongs to and the extension type. And then, yeah. then it also extend, you know, we are extending Symfony, com, I mean, Symfony command class. So it's, we are trying to keep as much possi as possible as the standard Symfony comes command. Then it also, since I decided to inject a service, it also takes care of, you know, creating the, pro the, I mean, the protected property, adding, injecting this, using dependency injection on my constructor, and, uh, you know, adding the proper configure method. All this is, you know, that for you, this is how we manage translation. So instead of putting the text, we call a key. And it also adds the execute method. This is the one who executes the command itself. And then this is how you use your functionality, right? And, um, and you want to output something it's like this. But, okay, and how this service get injected in my command? Well, well, the generator, it also takes care of creating the, the service file for you, so module.service.yaml. And as you can see here, we are defining the service name. We are also telling which class should be registered as a service. And it also, we are using right here, like passing the argument, which is this, this is a Drupal course in the Drupal core service containers, I mean Drupal service from the Drupal container. And it also, we're tagging this as Drupal command. Tagging this as Drupal command, this is how Drupal console find out this service is a command. Well, talking about current integration, we have a few few modules: a meta tag, web profiler, Drupal commerce, configuration split, and the schedule updates. I mean, if you know about all, any other module, please let us know, because we are we are actually we are here this week to help this maintain, maintainers of those modules to kind of update to the latest release RC1, because as we mentioned, it changed little things here and there. So now command should be registered as a service. Okay, maybe you think it's, this project is kind of helpful and you want to contribute. So this is not rocket science. It's, you know, the, the, fault, the, the steps are the same as usual, you know. Fork in the project, clone it, and just get into dependencies, start working on it. And yes, send a pull request. So we are using GitHub. We are syncing the project with Drupal.org, with DO, but we maintain, you keep the development on, on GitHub. This is because when we just start the project, a lot of people, more people from the Symfony uh, community start helping us with, with sending pull requests, and they don't have like a DO user account, and we cannot force them, you know, create a user there, you know, so you'll be able to send a patch. And then, you know, we decided to do it like that way. So we keep the development on GitHub. And we provide with two command examples. If you want to create your own core command, this is an example command and something we call example container aware. Please don't use that one. Just use it. I mean, if you, there's no other way to do that. And uh, we provide you with those examples. You can just copy paste it and just change the namespace and start working it. So again, this is, this is for creating commands within the Drupal console, I mean, core project. And as a big, big notice, this project is a Symfony application. So the code you look, you will see here, maybe look a little different. You know, the coding style we're using is PSR2. We are not like Drupal coding style on the project, on the application level, right? But all of the generated code is a Drupal coding style. I mean, come on. Well, let's, let's finish wrapping things up with about the roadmap. So our roadmap is obviously increased code coverage and improve documentation and translation. You know, we, we need to, we need to, we know we need to like increase, I mean, adding more tests to the project, make sure everything is working fine. And the way we are, now that we are taking advantage of injecting services from the Drupal container, so we, were, we will be able to write tests, same, same more Drupal-alike tests. So people, it will be easier for people to help us writing those tests as well. And finally, do you like to help? 
how can how can you I mean guy help us? I mean there's two ways you might be a freelance developer, what you can do, just get try to find some time. You know, at some I mean at some point in during your working day and just try the project, love it or hate it, just let us know. I mean reporting an issue is it's, it's really important. I mean it's not it's not, it's not like you're required to write something as again, this is not rocket science. I mean, it, use, use, using the project and reporting an issue is, is awesome, it's great, it helps a lot. It also, you can, I mean, if you will, send a pull request, we really appreciate pull request. Right? And what if you're a company? Well, if, if you're a company, maybe this will be a good starting for your resources to learn Drupal A from inside. Uh, we are more than happy to try to explain there how to contribute in office hours. And, and and obviously your thing will be gain reputation as a, a one of the more new exciting projects in Drupal A universe in those days. <laughs> in my opinion. So if you have any question for us, is feel free to stock ours in our Twitter or GitHub accounts. Or using the mic right here. Or using the microphone. This is that's it. So this is all we have. So if you have any questions, please. Go to the mic. Well, we, we uh, actually just last one last thing before the question. We have a buff as well. If you want to keep the conversation, we can move to the buff after this closes, or just just keep the just, I mean conversation on the hall. Feel free to interrupt us. I mean during the conference. I mean again, just thank you for coming. Thank you for staying all this time. And if someone has a question, here's the mic. There are, there are some stickers if you are interested. I have a specific question. Uh, with the user login command, is there a way that you could pass, there's a way that you can pass the site domain to the command? Is there a way that you can pass the browser you want the login URL to open in to the command? Like open the browser? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there, I mean, not actually, but yeah. Well, yeah, it is, it's, it's doable, it's not done yet, and uh, we can work on that during this week if you want to. That would be awesome, thank you. Yeah, okay, so the question was if there is any plan to do integration between Drush and, and Drupal console. We tried in the past, actually one time was was an integration was written, was sending a pull request, uh, but it wasn't accepted. Uh, this is all we could do at the past. And also another problem is uh, we work using OOP and the Drush doesn't. And I think, um, uh, it's it's not necessary. It's like a, it's it's like a asking an integration between panels and display suite. Why is that necessary? You could choose. That's it. What? Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, as mentioned, we try. We try. We do our best. We did a session last DrupalCon. We spent hours doing this. It didn't happen, unfortunately. I mean, it will. Probably not. This is the good thing about open source, right? You could choose your, the tools you want to, to use. That's it, right? So it, it, for us, it's not like a competition. So we decided to do uh, a symphony because when we started this, it's like a, we are more jealous than how symphony console works. And we want to do that, to have that in Drupal A. That was the real motivation. Actually, if you show this to a symphony developer, he, because he don't know anything about uh, Drupal, he was like, ah, a symphony console in, 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 in Drupal A. And I said, yeah, that's that exactly what it is. Uh -huh. Hi. Uh, I want to ask for help in the name of the third developer, the, uh, David, who is working really hard today, trying to port uh, the Drupal console and actually Drupal 8 into a Debian package. Uh, Debian starting to code freeze at, no at November 5, so we have at least more or less 15 days to, to, to make that package and put it on Debian to, to have Drupal 8 and Drupal Console at Debian 
and the next stable relief. So if someone is uh, uh, had some experience maintaining Debian packages, or it's a hardcore Drupal console user, uh, he could be could be a great help for him. Another question? Or we can go to ah, another question. You could be, yeah, but yeah. So with the change to the installer, um, so do you recommend doing a, a global install and have an install for each project? Is that yeah, the global install, it's only a launcher. So it's, it's basically a shortcut for accessing without typing user local bin blah, 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 or just finding out that where the file was downloaded that contain a minimum amount of commands, just like four. Like listing and here. But once it finds a site, or when you're running within a site, it discovers the rest of the commands. So or the, the, what we just did is, as breaking the project, we have the launcher, which is again, the global one that you should, ex I mean, you can install. We highly recommend you to do that because it's easy to manage than going to your site and use Vendor, Vin Drupal, or CD Web and you know that that vendor in Drupal. So it's it's a, it's just a shortcut for doing this. But again, it's a minimum number of commands, and the rest of the commands get installed within your site. In means if you have 8.1, you can have some commands. Then when it, once 8.2 got released next week, maybe you have another version, and you can get a new I mean new commands or new features on that version without breaking 8.1. Sure. And it can can it be run anywhere in the hierarchy of the project. Not again. Okay, that's something we need to fix. It's broken on this version. It's like a regression thing. I won't say broken. Yeah. Right. And one last one. Um, is there any plans for Drupal 7 support, considering it might be around for the next five years? Sadly, no, because they're all OP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and the reason we decide to use a Symfony component instead of doing in, in like you know, in a shiny, you know, yes. Yeah, it's because we take advantage of you know a lot of like components in the Drupal container. We, cause, I mean, you kind of discover things within, so that's why. So going to seven will be like hard. I guess uh, seven's maybe going to be supporting Composer. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but I mean, we we I mean the component is there. We could, could probably someone could probably write commands. We can help them. Actually, I've been discussing this with backdrop people, and they are they are interested. So I mean, we won't write it for sure. I guess the hardest part is that if you're still supporting Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 sites over, you know, over the next few years, you've sort of got... Sort of no, no, out. Drupal console is D8 only. Yeah, yeah. yeah but actually, it, it technically could be possible because now we have the launcher, so the launcher, if we invented some release for Drupal 7 or someone in, uh, created a release for console for Drupal 7, then the launcher, in theory, could be the type that and execute that, This is which is one of the idea of separation, to try to do this kind of crazy... Ideas. And then they can use the Drupal console core thing, which is basically an extended version of the Symfony console component, to, on top of that, build their commands. Yep. So, um, yeah, with the credit system of Drupal 4, can you talk about using the project tag from GitHub to Drupal 4? Yeah, we, what, what we do with that is that we request, because we work in GitHub, to people need to commit with the same email they have in Drupal.org, and then when we sync, you get the attribution in GitHub and Drupal.org, but the company doesn't get the attribution. Only, this is only the, the, the developer. The developer. That's, okay. and that that's, is. And that's a really nice thing about like DO, you know. I, I, I don't want to talk about the patching and then the, you know, the QCQ, all the thing, I mean, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's highly complicated for newcomers, for people, just people new to the project. And at some point, again, as I mentioned, if you are not part of the I mean, Drupal community, so you're required to have a login for that. And I mean, everyone has a GitHub account right nowadays. It's like it's easier to find out someone with a GitHub account than with a Drupal org account. And I mean, maybe I mean, hopefully the um, the Drupal you know system has a way to like passing extra value or metadata. Or probably that could happen. Maybe it, maybe it's already there, and we don't know. We can probably find out about this, and if it's we can probably say, okay, if you want your company to get credited for this, do you have to like format your commit something like this? If that is doable from the DO side side of things, we can easily I even mean, write some documentation for that. Any other question? No? Speaker here. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much.